Welcome to Lore Hero, episode 25. You may notice that we only have three people this week. Uh, Alec is uh, is busy, as you might have already guessed, uh, because he is at home with his family. He's taking family time, and uh, he just couldn't fit in the schedule today to record, which is fine. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want him to take any special time away from his family. He had to travel like a billion miles uh, from Maine to California. I don't remember how many it is. Like, is it like 3,000? It's a lot. It's a bajillion. Quite a few. Quite a few. How, how many miles? I mean, okay, it's, Google, it's, opposite, Google Maps. it's opposite ends of the United States. Literally. Yep, it's pretty much Opposite the furthest ends. furthest he could travel yep. within this within the contiguous United States. Um, okay, we're gonna start in Maine. We'll just we'll just type in Maine. I don't know where it puts us in Maine if I do this, and then we're gonna go directions to California. I don't know where it's gonna put us. Don't know where he is in California, and I honestly don't. Southern. Care. Um, That's the other thing too. He's going to SoCal, so it's like he's going to SoCal. corner to literally, corner, literally corner to corner. Yeah. Um. This says. I mean, just just. Maine to California, no no specific places. Uh, three thousand two hundred forty six miles. I think he had a layover too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think I don't think he flew direct. That it's like a blows. mile per note and through the fire and flames. Wow. Yeah. And, oh my god. And Maine, I hate, <laughs> that's that's a cool way to put things. <laughs> Every note is a mile, dude. Imagine road tripping, but you can only play one note per mile you go. That Man, hurt. that through the fire and flames intro sucks, dude. 200 miles you'd be it, traveling from maine you'd be like in new york by the time you're done with the intro that Probably sounds like the actually. worst road trip ever that'd be cursed oh. we should do that we should do that all right lord well, hero road that, trip and we're gonna play a one note that per would mile. be like that would be like the best worst stream ever would be agonizing we just got the confirmation <laughs> Yo, we, of a first ever, lore hero first ever person. negative yeah for, yeah confirmation we're actually gonna do it lore we're gonna rent an rv in person <laughs> event you can you can tag behind, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be the very first live stream to ever have negative viewership. Nobody's ever oh gonna watch God. that shit. <laughs> People would yeah, pay we, you to, to not watch it. Yeah, we have to owe viewers. Um, anyways, uh, seven. I have a few topics to discuss today. I came prepared. I want to hear them. So yeah, he, here's serious. the nice thing about this: Moose has not told us what these topics are. He wants to bring them no. up and have us have our real reactions. So let's do it. Yes, Some so epic reaction. JP was talking a little bit early pre pre show before we started recording about um, video essays and how like that's kind of a, a good meta to do on YouTube right now. Sure, um, if you, if you want to like put out good quality content but also get paid for it because they're usually long and they get good RPMs. Um, yeah. Just today, as we are recording this, we are recording on a Friday, Friday March 29th. This video was uploaded by uh, a YouTuber named Clubs Hub. It is a, it is, it is called, I played and ranked every guitar hero. It is two hours and 44 Holy minutes crap. long. <laughs> it is long as fuck. And this guy is not a big YouTuber by any means. He has about 5,000 subs, uh, and his recent videos, um, uh, don't get a ton of views. So this guy is not making a lot of money off this. This is done for passion. Hell yeah. This is passion. I, I, I haven't watched all two hours, 45 minutes of it, but I have watched a lot of it. Yeah, I see you um, commented on it too, and they 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 even they even replied saying your videos were a huge help throughout this little adventure of mine. Yeah, I mean that's actually that's actually how I discovered this. Um, he tweeted, um, he was he tweeted this out and he tagged me in one of the tweets saying that I and Jason and Asai, uh, were were big um uh inspirations uh for making this video. Uh, no way. So that was neat. Oh, yeah. I'm putting this. I'm nice. bookmarking this right now. I want to watch this later. Yeah, this yeah, shit's amazing. Cool. I have not watched the full thing again, but what I have seen, this is a very high quality production, and he did a very good job doing it. Um, so, real quick, he goes through every Guitar Hero game, including mobile Guitar Hero games. Everything. Literally everything you could ever find that has the name Guitar Hero on it, and DJ Hero, for that matter. So it's not just the console games, no. He, he got all these old-ass, like, Motorola Razor phones and Nokia phones and found ways to play all those fucking mobile dog shit games. And he ranked Dude, them all. This That's is awesome. Right there. It was a really cool fucking video. Hey, I love seeing on the timeline that Guitar Hero Live is there at the end. Because, man, I love watching people who've never seen it go, what the fuck was this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen yes. that segment yet, so I have no idea what he says about it. But, I can't um, wait. I, I did skip to the end to see his ranks. Uh, so if you go to 237, like the second to last timestamp or whatever, that's when he starts going over all of his ranks. We should discuss this. Okay. So if you just go to the go to the end of of, of that like, little timestamp so you can see the full list. Let's discuss because this guy okay. is he's not like us. He's fairly casual. Like he played these games when he was when he was younger, like as a kid, and he, he uh, you know he couldn't pass every song in expert, right? So he's he's at that level of play. He can play expert, but he can't pass every song. So this is like the level of play we're talking about here, and this is how he thinks of these games. His number one 
spoiler alert, if you want to watch this video, skip ahead to the timestamp you see on screen, um, is Warriors of Rock, which I think is Whoa. cool. Because, because that is, Interesting. in my mind, that's like the, that's like for the fans. It's like the big boy, really hard songs for like, yeah. for the ultra degen mode like us. But him yeah. as a more casual enjoyer really likes that game. It's his favorite one. Wow. Next to okay, so three. This, is, this is a very interesting list. I'm looking mm -hmm. at the list right now. I'm clicking through it. And it's fun to see all of the mobile games at the bottom. Yeah, they, the bottom row trash. is entirely mobile games. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is absolutely right after understood. The, the, DS, the DS games. <laughs> yeah, which is a different type of mobile game, <laughs> to be yes. fair. Uh, the DS games are their own quality of shit, well, like Caleb legitimately. Adams. Definitely better than the than the phones. But yes. Not as good as console games. So they're, no. I think they're ranked accurately, how this guy has them. This is legitimately a decent ranking because I mean it all comes yeah. down to personal preference at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, I yeah, mine most, would not look like this. The most interesting things to me so far that stands out is uh, <laughs> Guitar Hero Live Dead in the Middle, which is kind of where I'd put which, it. It's, but it's not really it's a Guitar last Hero game. in the console games. Yes, last of the console games because <laughs> it's not really Guitar Hero. It has a name no, on it, it but it's Frankenstein. Thing, yeah. It's it's just Guitar Hero Frankenstein well, onto something else. There's something criminal in here. Oh, is it two and tenth? It's the fact that what's number nine is ahead of GH two. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Smash that's, hits ahead of Guitar Hero. That's, that's criminal. To me. In fact, GH two being behind all of those games is criminal, right? How like, I would have uh... I would have put GH two where Aerosmith is. And then did a little bit of rearranging. I do like one of his big hot takes on this list. One of my favorite hot takes is DJ Hero 1 and 2 being in the top five. Yeah, he really enjoyed those games. He called them like a hidden gem masterpiece of, of a game. Which I agree. I don't. I, mean, I hate those fucking games. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've, never, I've never played DJ Hero 2. You hate the guitar engine. Really? I, don't, okay. I, I, hate the, I hate the guitar engine, and I also hate the DJ thing. I don't. I never liked the DJ turntable. I don't like the songs, for that matter. I don't like the remixes. I don't like, I don't really? like anything to do with that game. Hate it. Worst game ever. I, I do not like I didn't DJ play Hero. DJ Hero that much, to be fair. So, okay, to me, DJ Hero was ahead of its time. And this is, okay, maybe a hot take from me, and I'm very curious to hear listeners' opinions on this. But DJ Hero and Guitar Hero Live both hit the same spot for me, and it makes sense because they both have the same developer. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, games. Guitar Free Hero Live games. has so many overlapping features with DJ Hero. The three buttons, right? The higher skill ceiling than what people realize from just looking at it at the, at the like at a glance, right? People see the gameplay and they go, "Oh, that looks like that'd be easy," but then it's way harder than what you think by just looking at it, yeah, right? Sure. That That's was very much. Buttons. How hard could it be? Right. Yeah, it's very much a freestyle games thing. So I think they were ahead of the curve with the mashups because look how many mashups are, are popular nowadays the way that the mashup culture has evolved oh, and make a good point there those were all exclusive who the fuck would have ever thought that we'd see metallica mashed up with kanye in an official hero game but yet dj hero did it Definitely that happened I, I didn't know metallica yeah. was even in one of those games what song with kanye yeah what yeah. song Z it was it was what? Uh, let me get the mashup and, and drop it here. That's fucked. So really, I mean, I think there was like 90-something songs in the first DJ Hero. Well, 90 mashups. So in theory, there was really like 180 songs. Well, I, I've heard from most of DJ Hero, like I think even Alex said, like DJ Hero 2 is like way better than the than the first one. The Day That Never Love Comes? Lockdown. Love what Lockdown the? with The Day That Never Comes. Yeah. Interesting. From DJ Hero 2. Yeah. They had some wild ass mashups, and these were all original mashups that you could only get from DJ Hero. They weren't from somewhere else, right? Um, one of my favorites to point out is the Poker Face mashup. They mashed up Poker Face with uh, Duran Duran. And this that's shit's ass, by the way. I hate hey. everything about this Kanye West Metallica thing. I'm never playing DJ Hero 2 in my life. <laughs> this shit sucks. I hate it so much. It's not, not it for whatsoever. you, buddy. Not for me. Not my hey, game. Hey, maybe not for you. Hits not the my spot game. for me. I'm glad it does for uh, I, you. I love that in the Poker Face Duran Duran mashup, you can very obviously tell the fucker face line. You know, oh, really? <laughs> like, because like, that's before anybody realized it was there. So it's not censored. So yeah. you've just got this girls, girls, fuck her face. Like, that's just so <laughs> random. <laughs> on brand. Yes. It's uh, Girls on Film by Duran Duran is the mashup. That's it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I just listened to it. Yeah, it's about a, about a minute into that same video. I, I found it on my own. 
Jesus yeah. Christ. Absolutely. Like there's some really fun things to point out from DJ Hero. Uh, was scoring for single player the stupidest thing in a hero game? Goddamn right. Because, hey, Why? Okay. What, what was up with the scoring? All right. I have no so idea. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, you never played DJ Hero, so you wouldn't know this. I have uh, no clue. Okay. Imagine while DJing, if you just had to, every 60 notes, spin the platter backwards, because that rewind. was a rewind. Rewinds, yeah. right? So to get optimal points, every 60 notes you had to spin immediately. And replay the part of the song and FC it again. Oh. That's how that worked, huh? That's how that worked. Every hmm. 60 notes, you got to rewind. So you That's had to more play it. That's probably because I was missing notes. <laughs> Every 60 notes, you got to rewind. And it was play it again. So not That's only did weird. you have to be good enough to hit hard sections, you, you had to be able twice. to be good enough to rewind on command and then do it again. And That's, That's just a cool mechanic, actually. I respect that. I mean, it's, I it's brutal. It. Yeah, a hard song, it you, end up, you end up doubling the length of it, right? Like Essentially, yeah. It's, very, it's a very unique thing, too, that only would really work in this kind of game, right? Right. Yeah. Well, so DJ also, Hero, ahead of its time, but still weird. Yeah. It's also worth unique. mentioning that, um, you know, the, the modding scene with DJ Hero turntables is, like, booming right now. I have heard. I haven't looked at any of that. Yeah, That's so, new to me. I never sought um, it out, but I've I've come across it on my Twitter. People are making mech fret turntables. Yeah, yeah, somebody that I know, what? Crafty, made like a made like an integrated board, f like to be used with Sandtroller for a DJ Hero turntable. It's really cool. Like it has That's like nuts. It has like the, the chip from a Pico, the RP twenty forty integrated and everything. It, it has like slots for mechanical switches and stuff. Um, oh. USB C, right? Or like a, like a breakout uh pin breakout pins to like wire out USB C that kind of stuff. Man, I think that's I don't know. Fun. DJ Hero is one of the series that I wish they would have. Like, I think if oh, it would have come out, if they would have come out like five, six years yeah. later. I don't know if you guys if knew it, I had this. I, I, it's a demo kit. I didn't know you had DJ that. Hero. No, that's it's wired. Cool. It's a wired turntable. Wait, wow. what? I, up, I didn't even know this existed. My, I have it on my very top shelf that <laughs> the camera can't frame, see. Out of frame, yeah. Yeah, the camera wow. can't see. I also have a, a, huh. a Guitar Hero 2 demo kit up there as well that just fell down. Oh, yeah. That's what you can't see on the camera. Yeah. If, if DJ cool. Hero was made like five or six years later, I think it would have been a hit, right? I could agree with that. I think I think you're right about that. It came out could've... during the boom, and there was too much for people to buy already. And at the time, people yeah. were already it came out at the worst it. time, really. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, like how, can, were... how can I hold all this Guitar Hero was really where we were at at that point, right? Yeah, we had already had people who were buying plastic drum sets at that point, right? And living rooms were taken over by plastic instruments. And it's like, oh, let me let me get another couple of turntables that I can st stuff in my closet too. <laughs> yeah, no more. Yeah, like people, I don't want any more of these seeing, things. People seeing this game be like, what the fuck is this? Like that was probably the reaction back then. Like that's my reaction. So fortunate too because it's a cool idea, right? Well, like was Rock Band three out at this point? Like the pro instruments. I mean, there like there were way too many no. peripherals. This came out between Guitar Hero five and Band Hero. I want to say the first okay. DJ Hero. I'm saying. I want to say yeah. it was between those two. What's the DJ yeah. Hero release date? I'm gonna fact check that. DJ Hero. Hey, when's Guitar Villain date? coming out? They still have that trademarked. Yeah, it was okay. Oh my god, it, I didn't realize this. So Guitar Hero Five came out September first, two thousand nine. DJ Hero One came out October twenty seventh, two thousand nine, and then the week after the first DJ Hero came Band Hero, November third, two thousand nine. So <laughs> Band Hero, what? DJ Hero, within a week of each other. That's... So we had the. We had, Man, we had three different hero thinking, games dude? coming out within two months. Three different heroes. Guitar, and band, wanted, and they, DJ. Th these dudes wanted to make Band Hero 2? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. And like, here's what? the other thing, too. Yeah. Uh, I forgot this until I just saw this right now. DJ Hero 2 is actually a newer game than the oldest Five Fret Guitar Hero game. This is true. I, I forgot true. that DJ Hero 2 came out after Warriors of Rock. Yeah, I didn't October know that. 19th, wow. 2010, it seems. Yeah. And uh, Guitar Hero October. Wars of Rock came out September 28th, 2010. Wow, so they did, they did it again, though. Like, two weeks later, yeah. a new game yeah, comes out. Yeah, two different out. heroes within a month, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, the oversaturation, are, man. It is. Like, how are you supposed to, like... Like, I, I mean, just, like, thinking back to, like, you know, being being in this, right? Like, I, I knew DJ Hero existed, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to play Guitar Hero, though. <laughs> yeah, right? like, yeah, and, good for those guys over there. And, I'm going to stay over here. <laughs> and even even back then, like, you know, 
because like one like once once Metallica came out, like things went off the rails, right? Like <laughs> and like I, I just remember like JLC getting smash hits early. Van Halen getting shipped not for resale at GH five. Warriors of Rock just kind of coming out. Like with promo videos like a month before of like, you know, sudden death. Like didn't didn't they have Danny in like a promo video or something? Did they? Like I know he got, I know he's, they, I know they sent him a, a shit a, a band copy early. Huh. He had, yeah, he had like, the, our, the whole band bundle. I, I think he was on like an IGN channel. video or something. I think that's what it was. Let me. I remember that I if that's check. the case, but I do remember towards the end he started getting free shit. He had he got free DJ Hero stuff too. I think it might have been DJ Hero one. Like he bought the you got the Renegade kit. Remember that it was like a special edition bundle with like a black that, DJ deck with like Eminem it had the. And it was the Jay Z thing, and then it had the the deck like stand that came with. Yeah, it or something. yeah, it came with yeah. like a whole stand for your thing. It was it was kind of neat. It, it looks cool. This, this video maybe maybe it just doesn't exist anymore. But like I I swear to God that he um he was on something for like a like a game a gaming publication right and was mm. playing. I think it was him and Scotty. Oh, I think it was them playing. Either through the fire flames or fury of the storm, Danny was on guitar and Scotty was on drums. I swear to God that this exists. Uh, I, I know. I swear to God. Second. Okay, I don't think it was Scott. Hmm. Now I don't remember because I know that they were going for like Guinness World Records with with like a full yeah, band. It was it was maybe... him and his brother. Or no 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 who who was that? I don't think it was his brother that I was thinking of. It was some other guy that was playing drums. Was like, some guy. Uh, Mer uh, some guy, yeah, it was some guy nine one three. Oh, some guy is awesome. Yeah, I'm pr I'm pretty sure they're playing Merciful Fate on uh, Guitar and Metallica. That's the video I'm thinking of, where where there was like some republication. But that's different from what you're thinking of. Yeah, we I have a guest. Hi, hi, guest. Hello, Hello Tara. Hi, Tara. Dude, I I'm just like I'm I'm looking I'm looking this up, and like the the third video in the recommended is Guitar Hero versus Real Guitar, and it's Danny and Jack playing. Danny's oh playing God. Guitar Hero, and Jack's playing Real Guitar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All I can think of when I think of that is there was an old cover that his dad did of Comfortably Numb. Oh my and God. I, yeah. And all I can remember is there was a person in the competitive scene who could not stand Danny's dad and was trolling the hell out of them. Shout out to Smokey Pro. I was going to say the name. I was going to wonder uh, if you were going to say the name. I was going to yep. say it anyways. I remember the videos. Yep. You remember? <laughs> you remember? I remember those videos. <laughs> He could, he could That's just a them. burst of nostalgia right there. Yeah. Those are lost. Those are long lost. I found at this point. It. Those are gone. Yep. I found. I found the video. You oh, no. There, there's no way the comfortably numb solo is up there. Please. No, I no not Different the comfortably video. numb. I found. Okay. I found. I found that. the IGN video. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. What's in the fire and flames? It was. It was him and his brother. So I it's, it was some it's guy. Danny and some guy. Okay. It's, yeah, it's Danny and some guy. So we yeah, we look. worked together with our with our two memories to create one. We had two separate memories yes. that somehow formed into one and got the correct thing. Yo, Damn, this video bro. Has seven and a half million views. Holy shit, dude! Wait, 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 wait! You, you want to know? You want to know what's criminal too? Is the some guys playing on the fucking world tour drum set? Yucky. That's all that was. Look at the date, July two thousand nine. That was before the Guitar Five one even came out. This, this is, is like Smash right... Hits was, just came out. This is a month after Smash Hits came out. So Smash Hits released June sixteenth, two thousand nine. This is July tenth, two thousand nine. So this is the this is the newest game at the time, Smash Hits. Dude, oh my god. Okay, what? so if you watch I Danny's hands, if you watch Danny's hands, you can see yeah. the flat finger technique. Yeah, he had such an you, interesting way of playing. You would play with playing. like flat fingers. I know. I've never understood that. Like, I actually really liked playing flat finger because like really. Okay, so here's oh, the yeah. reason. I, I still especially try on to, Fortnite, and I I can't. I can't it feels do it. Better I have for to, timing. I have to, Really? Not it for does. me. I have to have it bent. Interesting. Oh man. And not only that, but like Danny preferred playing without a faceplate. Like in this video, yeah, he doesn't have a faceplate. That's plate. also super weird to me. No, no faceplate because my thumb would always get caught on the that, piece where the though. like yeah, he did. He, he took he him off immediately. Always, he always played without a faceplate. It was the they, most. They got so much louder without ever. a faceplate too. I mean, hey, that's what we've been telling people about the Riftmaster, right? Like, if people want the clicky or some strum bar when they get it, take the faceplate off. Yeah, it gets louder because there's 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 holes yeah. that that they're no longer being closed by the faceplate. It 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 can bark. Okay. Let it bark. I, I'm so, I'm so glad that I found this video and that I wasn't just insane and like yeah, this is like, this is cool. Th like remembering something that doesn't actually exist. Like <laughs> I'm like I yeah. know this exists. I know <laughs> how far we've come. This is though? one that we were. Yeah. yeah. Look yeah, in the comments. It says Fortnite moment. 
One of the newest comments is Fortnite moment. No way, you sold my newest. Holy bro. shit. Yeah, bro. Fortnite moment. Fortnite everywhere. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> That's it. Oh, here's a different one from eight months ago. This video is older than most Fortnite players. Completely unrelated to, 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 fe to festival. This is just Wasn't talking even to out about yet. Fortnite. Yeah, oh not even God. close. But now. Anyways, um, I wanted, I wanted to bring some up because we, we, we kind of did a good job fact-checking this. We made an oopsie oh. last week. Oh, what's that? We made, it, we made an oopsie last week. We, we were talking about Hoffer Teacher uh, five-lane drums FCs, and none of us could really think of who did it, and I thought of Joel, and then we, we mistakenly said that he was the first and only one to do it. No, it's been done a couple more times. Um, yes. Chris Body was actually the first one to ever do that. This is the body thing. I remember yeah, seeing, yeah. I, I didn't know shit about this, but yeah, Mr. thanks for body. informing me. Now, yeah, uh, it turns out him and Joel did it like very, very similar times, like very, mm -hmm. very close together. Um, and I was just recently talking to Joel, so that's why Joel was on my mind. So apologies to Chris Body for the incorrectness. Uh, but somebody in the comments did straight us out, straighten us out. So yes. we're good there. Hey, I um, appreciate that right there because, like, okay, we all have our own expertise. Yeah, call on us the out, show. please. <laughs> yeah, if, that, if we say something incorrect, let us know please. right now, straight up, because yeah, we we'll never know if we're wrong because what we're saying is what we think is correct. We so. yap about the things that we know, but at the same time, there's a lot of shit that's happened in this scene, and we can't know it all. That's why we put all our heads together. Yeah, right? and we the scenes have been expertise. here for almost two decades. We have almost yeah. two decades of knowledge to talk about, and it's impossible to ever recall all of it. So yep. we're we're ma mainly like, the two things that we're going to try to do in order to like prevent stuff like that is to if we're unsure about something reach out to per people in question who might know, yeah, and uh, to just basically kind of just do what I did with the through fire and flames video, where, like actually try to find it before I stated this fact. <laughs> yeah, or just <laughs> say much. wait, hold on, let me let me double check that or doing something like that. Yeah, like before before <laughs> stating it as fact, like actually try to be like, wait, does this really exist? Am I just yeah, crazy? Because, like, uh, because this concern was brought up to me uh, privately in Discord, and um, somebody somebody mentioned that we are kind of like one of the foremost news um, uh, sections. Like we're, this is where people like come to learn about the community, right? And we don't want to start spreading misinfo, right? We want to be no. spreading yeah. the correct information. That's always the goal. We don't want to be the meme, right? Of like me when I spread misinformation on the internet. Like we do, yeah. that's not what we want to <laughs> no. be. Like you know, really not. That's actually it's it's a very funny thing that you bring that up. It's something that I've been feeling a lot as we've been getting into the Fortnite community. All right. So we come from Guitar Hero and Rock Band, all of us. But Fortnite is kind of absorbing those communities a little bit with festival, right? Mm -hmm. Like going, hey, no, we want you to be here. Come play our game. And because of that, we're kind of having to adjust to a little bit of Fortnite culture as well. Yep. And yes. something that I've seen over and over with Fortnite content creators is that they will clickbait and thus not necessarily be forthcoming with information no. in the most honest of ways no i'll say it they're lying to you for views yes yeah they're just, they're just being monkey. blatantly fire mis monkey's misleading cool. fire, fire monkey's sick cool, so. we love fire monkey we, but we love but fire monkey the, the 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 kind of slop that pops up on my tiktok for you page yeah. about yo you gotta try out this new fortnite xp map right now you get a two billion xp you'll level up and then everybody's like yo, it doesn't work bro i just tried it it doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't yeah. work but oh they, 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 they patched it they patched yeah, they it, patched and then they it. Oh, yeah. one tomorrow. Here's yeah, the code. It. Yeah, try so, a different one. I'll do another one tomorrow. And then meanwhile, they're getting active players on their UEFM maps, and somehow they're getting paid for all that. I don't know exactly yeah. how Hula. it works. But that's yeah. th that's yeah. just straight up what they're doing. They just, it's they are they're putting out slop for their own personal benefit, and that's despicable, I think. That is, that should be a I mean, bannable offense. I'm doing offense. that on TikTok, and I take full accountability, but at least it's, at least. No, but like, yours are funny. Yours are funny. funny. This, this one isn't like, funny. <laughs> yeah. You're not trying to mislead people. Uh, no, which I'm is not. I just think it's funny. Not too like, much. <laughs> we, see, yeah. we see so much of that. And it's it's a shame because like I've been tr very truthful with all my content, right? I've been trying to like get news out. And a lot of times people don't believe me because they're conditioned to yeah. not in the Fortnite. Like it's not about me. It's that the culture as a whole is like very... Hey, make sure like subscribe, even yeah. if this isn't true. I've got the clickbait they're, they're, here. They're like traumatized, know. man. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I legitimately. I, like, I imagine, to imagine, call if it we, out. imagine if we had that, like in our community, like <laughs> right. Like, yeah, but I mean, like as a rule of thumb, it is always good to be skeptical of where you're getting your information from. Oh yeah, sure. you, you have to you have to find trusted sources, and if the, it seems like there's a huge problem in finding good trusted sources within the Fortnite community for yes. good for your information. Fire Monkey. He'll never steer you wrong. Yeah. Well, true. Fire Monkey's great. He's we love he only works with what leaked information comes out, so there's always a grain of salt of well, maybe that maybe it isn't actually coming out. It's a, it's only leak. But Fire Monkey's a good source of information that I found at least. And um, 
Who's the other guy? Uh, Shady? No. Yeah, Shady seems Shady's, all right from everything Shady, I've seen. Shady's good. What's yeah. the other, what's the other big guy that I, that I would see pop uh, up on my page? <laughs> I personally am always a fan of 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 seeing Hypex's tweets on on on, yes. on Zitter Twitter, uh, only because they're the one who always uh, gets the pop culture wrong, and I love that. You know, like the oh, rap yeah? guy from TMNT, that I don't know his name. That 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 whole thing that was the greatest tweet. Wait, that wait that happened. Yeah, tweeted out the picture of Splinter and was like, "Here's the rat guy. I don't know his name." Or uh, <laughs> or what? tweeting out the um the iceberg that's coming for with Ang. And they're like, I don't know if this is a zero point thing or if it's Avatar related. And it's literally the opening scene from Avatar that's going to be on the map. Oh, that's funny. Like, that's dude, funny. When, I like dude, that. <laughs> when the for I love the Fortnite content creators that know shit about pop culture because it leads to beautiful memes. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. I saw that's just, the other day. Oh, I mean, Papa, Papa, Papa Elon's probably paying pretty well for that that unintentional engagement bait, you know? No joke. Speak, speaking of purposely spreading misinformation and, and talking about Fortnite quote leakers, uh, this Equinox FN Create feller over on over Oh, on yeah, Zitter. yeah, I know Equinox. Yes. Yeah, yeah he, he put out he put out this banger tweet the other day. Didn't get a whole lot of traction, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> just, just just a bunch of random ass not songs that are coming to the no, game. I just, got... I, I just I just immediately saw SpongeBob. And like... <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob, the best day ever. <laughs> Family Guy theme. Uh, Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. You know. Hey, so semi Equinox, Equinox no I gotta give them some love. That. They're legitimately good. They've got some real first place scores on the leaderboard. So yes. mm -hmm. shout out to Equinox because they're a UEFN creator. That's gotten into festival because of what they're putting in the game, right? Looking in the music they enjoy, playing the songs they like, kicking ass on the leaderboard. I love to see new members of the community who are like based in UEFN coming in and slaying. That's awesome. Well, they, had, they had uh they had first place on the middle vocals yesterday. I don't know if that's still standing. Oh, surely uh, not at this point. I think they got numb yeah. as well recently. They did, yeah. And yeah. You know, uh looking at um well, wait, hold on. Which the middle are we talking about? Talking Jimmy Eat World or are we talking the new one from last week? The middle zero. <laughs> no, hey, two. Wait, no, one. We had it's one funny and two. Because oh, wait, did, did, they, yeah. did they not go zero and one or did they go one they went and two? One no, two. it's always one and two. The, the, the middle that was Jimmy Eat World was the middle two. So people are like, wait, okay. the two, where's the first middle? And it turns out we got the middle one this last week. They, they put them out in opposite yeah, order. Quick, quick question about the middle. Did you guys feel that lead was like under tiered by like one bar? The new middle? I didn't um, play it. Jimmy no, or like the Jimmy Zed. World. I oh, mean, the solo's um, not like the solo's a little tricky, but it's not like challenging. Nothing crazy, right? I think yeah. that the problem is that they're gearing the difficulty towards controller players, so playing it on guitar, it feels different. It, it, does. it does, yeah, and that's, true. And yeah, that's yeah. why that's why carry on remember, my wayward son. We're not son, playing it correctly. <laughs> carry not. on my wayward son is like really hard on guitar, in my opinion. Like I that, or, that organ solo is really hard. <laughs> I do not understand how I sight read FC that. Legitimately, I don't know that's fucking, that's nuts. Straight up nuts. I, I still have an FC. Like I, I saw, it's a hard I, ass like song. I, I played I it, and then I saw your score, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> I legit. I got lucky. I got lucky because that the clip that I put up of me hitting the organ solar was literally my sight read, and then I think I've FC'd it one since. You know what's you know what's crazy about that it's too nuts. is that Al, like don't know. Alex clip of um Alex clip of that that he put on Twitter. He has a pin. It has um seven hundred ninety two thousand views. On Twitter, on Twitter, yeah, that's crazy. Fifty three comments, seven hundred and forty two re retweets. I'm not calling it repost, <laughs> and seven point nine or nine point seven k likes. Let's like, go. That that's crazy to me. Like people want harder they, stuff. They do. They do. Yes, they do. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah. That, is a, that is a common thing I hear as well. Un unfortunately, I think that a lot of people who want harder stuff still haven't played the game, and they're waiting for it, and they're well, going to have okay, a harsh so realization if they don't understand strikes by the time they play. They, oh, yes, yeah. I agree, and yeah. I think that I think I'm starting to notice a little bit of a pattern. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to get difficult stuff once a month, right? Yeah. Like I think that that's. I I think that because if if you pay attention to the genre balancing, like this past this this past week, right? Like I think that all of us looked at the song list and we're like, huh? Yeah. 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 But Turned then, out to be pretty good, actually. It was yeah, but then you, yeah, go, was, then you go and bad. play it, but then you go and play it, you're just like, wow, wait, I, I judged a book by its cover, like, this is actually fun, you know? Yeah. Yep. And that's I one of the beautiful thing. things about about mm -hmm. the pad game play is that they can just chart shit however they want, right? Like, you're not, restrict, you're not restricted to, like, and, like, I, I say this is, like, a charter, 
you're not restricted to like, but it has to be accurate. You know, like you're yeah, not accuracy is not always good. No, it's not, not, they, not, not, they, not always fun. And they're they're physically unable to be accurate in this game due to default bindings, right? So yeah. it, it it's I think it's a really beautiful thing how uh limitation breeds innovation, right? True. And so with Guitar Hero and Rock Band just having the five frets, right? Like that that already did it, but now pads pad mode is breeding like a whole new level of innovation in in the, yes. in, the in the sense of like new rules like harmonics has been following the same sharding rules for a long long time and it's not thrown out out the window because you know when uh, instrument mode comes out obviously they'll be following those guidelines but like with pad mode pad mode has a completely new uh set of rules right yes and, and you're and completely it, spot on yeah and, and it's really like it, it's cool to see that and like people are like oh like you know, I could do a green red chord, like I could do like a blue orange chord, and it's like, well, just because you can do it doesn't. And I was like, I tell people like, I'm telling you right now, you, that you're they're never going to be allowed to do that, like they're banned, and that's no, it. That, it yeah, you know? it, it just won't happen. It just won't happen because the majority of players it, have like, the default key bindings. It just yeah. it's not something that'll ever happen. Like if I had to get if I had to guess, like the guidelines, like like that they have, like the document, probably like big bold in red. Do not use the following chords, right? Do not use the following shapes of single notes as well. Because, mm-hmm. like, quads, right? Like, um... And no three-note chords, the, too, the weak, because you're like, only like, using your two your two thumbs yeah. uh, normally, so you can't have like, like three. The what are you going to do? The weekend song that, uh, you know, is... is Right? And it's like they had the chart of this green, yellow, red, orange, right? Because if you Yeah, to go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And it just makes more sense. For this it's game. fun. It's fun. It's fun. Exactly. It is. So they cooked. I, Props I think to that Rhythm you <laughs> are spot on with the fact that they've had to change rules around, which is exactly what, I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but for me, when I'm playing festival, I prefer playing regardless of what it, difficulty is. I like playing drums and vocals more than lead and bass. And I have a reason for that. It's because lead and bass make me miss strumming, whereas drums and vocals yeah. feel like something new. Because vocals of the for new sure charting. is new. I like playing yeah, vocals yeah. because a lot of times vocals are the most prominent thing in a song, so it's easy to follow along with. You know, you, a yeah. lot of times you just know the melody. And drums are a very unique, different type of mechanic because they they're charted differently. There's a lot of different charting conventions that they use, where it's like a like an actual press and then a lift on the other one, which is cool. Yep. You don't see that in any other uh, instrument. For charting, and yep. that, that gives you a whole different dynamic to the chart. Uh, yeah. But guitar and bass, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it does just kind of make me think I could be strong right now. Yeah, be, be I really do cool. well, yeah. Like I think I think that the carry on my wayward son organ solo is the perfect example because your first yeah, that, instinct that, that's is sick. to anchor is to anchor red in the beginning, right? Like it that's, is, yeah, because it goes and I and I did that. Like I did that, it, right? Yeah, and your, then, your, and then, your and brain then, has been doing that for 15 years or whatever. So monkey and then they mode put happens, chiasm. and it's like you they know, put, they put chiasm at the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't, Kinda, I yeah. couldn't believe that. I was like, what? <laughs> but and yet we still no, have they, people they, saying it's too easy. And yeah, you know what, game, bro? That's easy, cool. Right? Mid in the shop. That's cool because you know what? Like I can't wait for the more difficult stuff to come out and for people to still say it's easy because hey, you know. Because it will be to, to people like, like but us. People but regard, regarding... are so absolutely like they're clone hero pilled at this point, though. They don't see spam and they go, "Oh, it's not, it's not crazy hard." It's yeah, not, not the same you're not thing. Like, like, what, there, not. there was like a there was like a troll term made up years ago where it was it was called like, "Oh, bro, you can frog slide this part." And I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is frog sliding?" You're just, you're just saying words at this point. Yo, words don't did have you any meaning ostrich? anymore. Did you ostrich the frump part? The f- you know what I'm talking about? Did you ostrich the frump? Oh, you scrungled on that one, bro. Come on. Next time I see Alex say, say streaming, I'm gonna, next time I see Alex streaming, I'm gonna say that to him and see how he, re- he reacts. Oh man, you scrungled that note, bro. You scrungled that one, bro. You scrungled. It out. scrungled. <laughs> hey, so, I, like, I, regard- I have a topic change when we're ready. Oh, let's well, I go. was gonna, I was gonna say Scrungle just in regards up. to like. Um, like, like I, I had mentioned this before we started, right? Uh, like, di- uh, difficulty bars, right? Yeah. Like I was, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of making fun of harmonics because I, I was, I was telling the guys that I, um, I, I had a friend over recently and we were just kind of fucking around on the game. I was having him try out the Riff Master, but then we started playing, uh, started playing like older charts, and so we were playing Constant Motion, which was Rock Band One DLC, 
And, mm. you know, and, and some, some people watching this might think that I'm insane for saying this, but Constant Motion Solo D is still hard in Clone Hero. And, like, and that's because, like, I'm trying to hit it completely legit. Like, I am not yes. double strumming any of the strums. Like, I am trying to hit it like I would in Rock Band 2, right? Sure. And because fuck playing in a Rock Band 1 or 3. Like, no yeah. thing. Right? Nah, like, rock Band 2 is no the best way. way to play that chart for sure. No way. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it's the irony of that is that um, at the time when it came out, it was ranked as a uh, 5 on guitar, which was Nightmare because you had challenging nightmare and impossible is tiers four five and six right and you know at the time constant motion was probably like the hardest solo in any dlc ever for a, yeah a while. for sure the, the closest while. one the closest other one probably be blackened by metal because the first blackened think yeah of, blackened's that's, hard that's, oh yeah blackened. that's rough that was also rock band one yeah. dlc but at yep. least that was a, day one that was a six but you know harmonics has tended to at, at that time um, and I think Afterlife would be another great example because Afterlife was one of the hardest solos too at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And that was that was a challenging. That was a four. Big difference. And the why Nowadays, you're... I don't think it's that hard. I one hand FC that shit. Well, you know what? Blackens? It's not because you can you can also no, alt tap it really. Oh, you can alt tap okay. it really easily as well. Like you don't like you have to yeah, remember when it was new, it was hard. You, you you have to remember that back then, uh, Afterlife people were doing this, right? Like they like they were like like they were they were playing it like. I oh, love yeah. that's how they just were tapping without the reds. The guitar. Without yeah. the guitar, you've made that look very Napoleon Dynamite. Oh my god, <laughs> that Dude. was great. Oh, that brings back memories. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the lyrics of the song that they play in that scene. <laughs> I did. I did that once as a joke, in, like in middle school. Like me, me and two of my friends, like learned that entire like choreographed little uh, helping hands, heart, whatever the hell they called that thing. And we we did that like in front of our class once, just as a joke. Some say love. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Love yeah, is a river. <laughs> yeah, that's on. Fortnite has to but win. <laughs> Ooh, but dude. yeah, TL TLDR. Uh, <laughs> I think I think that I think harmonics has gotten better with. Uh, difficulty ratings on songs but there's still some questionable stuff in fortnite festival jason you were thinking of one example in particular oh transparent soul this week yeah immediately comes oh, yeah. to mind that's a standout Yo, for me this that week. shit's hard the drums that it's drum hard. track it's Travis brutal Barker. hey that's that's if people are looking something fast tempo hey that's okay it's fast i just it's, tap it's, it on my guitar i did too even the chords and everything it's too fast i would yeah. tap it yeah I that's, think alex that's... i think to alex tapped it as well yeah so. Yeah, those those. I, did, I haven't played it on pad, but I'm sure it'd be very quick. I'm talking like that's pretty much how fast you'd have to tap on a on a controller left, right. Tra right and right, Travis right. Travis Barker loves like high BPM. Like he, yes. that's one of his favorite things, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like damn it, like dude, damn it was hard in World Tour. Not even a Travis really, Barker song. Hard. That's a Scott Rayner song. Is it really? Was, that was before uh, that was before Travis was in the band. Guys, I'm a fucking liar. Fake I'm fan. Sorry. He's a fake fan. <laughs> More but, misinformation but, from Lore Hero. Hey, no, Guitar <laughs> Hero spread that misinformation information kind of because on Guitar Hero World Tour, when Travis Barker was a cameo, that was the song he played. Damn it. It's not even Ooh. his drum song. Guys, he's I'm drumming not to somebody else's liar. drum chart. Like <laughs> uh, is, that's a Scott Rayner chart. Real damn it moment. I, for real. But that is a very fast we gotta, song. We got a two division. I agree. <laughs> Hey, uh, but, hey. Uh, Willow slaps. Yeah, just like, just yes. like her dad. Just, just like her. Oh, let's go. Oh, and that's fuck. a great segue in the Moose's segue. Yeah. No! So we we're, were talking about uh, th threatening legal action on Guitar Hero. Uh, this is a uh, this is a Reddit post um, from two years ago. Um, that was about the Guitar Hero One secret songs that Andy Bush, the the creator of Triple Let from Guitar Hero One, responded to within the past couple weeks. Like they sought out this Reddit post and wrote up a very large reply, giving oh, yeah. you the Andy entire actually, story about Triple Andy joined, uh Andy joined Milo Hacks recently. I've actually met Andy what? in person. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So Andy, I'll, I'll get. So Andy, um, Andy was in was in like a jam band with uh, a good friend of mine, and uh, Andy lives in the same place that I live. <laughs> apparently. Yo, you live and in the same house, bro. Here. Yeah, yeah, she's upstairs. Oh, cool. Bring her down. But yeah, Let's and, talk, but get that, on the pod. I, I mean, I, I, I would love to do that. But um, and Andy's super cool. Andy's an extremely talented bassist. Like, I went to like basically Andy has this thing going on at the local venue, um, where people just come up, and it, like anybody can come up as long as they like tell her in advance, like, hey, I want to jam tonight, and she'll just jam with people. Right? That's really cool. Like. 
Yeah, and so my friend Doug was was the drummer that like he he would because they would have people like on guitar and like bass and stuff come up and jam. So like somebody would stay on drums like for more or less the whole time, and so Doug would stay on drums for hours and just play along, and improv. And uh, so Andy would play bass, and yeah, Andy's crazy at bass. But yeah, I think that she posted the same story in Milo Hex, but. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's a really good read. It's very I miss insightful. That. I miss that Milo Hex. Yeah, I, I kind of read it yeah. out. Let's, I'll read it for the audio listeners. Yeah. Um, so I was, I have this on screen for all the for all the video viewers, but all you all you lovely audio listeners, I know I love you. You're out there. This is for you. I'm gonna read out yes, this sir. entire post. It's a long one, so so strap in. Uh, so it starts out. Uh, this is again from 17 days ago, as of recording this on a over two year old post. Um, hi, Andrelea here, author Triplet. Wanted to comment to explain a bit and give some context. Uh, the the post that, uh, that that she's replying to is just basically asking for the story about these these songs in the game and why they exist and how to get them. Um, so she says, so during the development of Guitar Hero, I was working in house as QA. At some point during one of our daily meetings, the heads of the dev team let us know that if we had any personal songs or per- personal project songs or songs by friends that we thought would be a good fit for the game, we were welcome to submit them for consideration. As I recall, these became the bonus songs in the game, which which tracks, that makes perfect sense, because all the bonus songs in that game were kind of just harmonics in-house stuff. That is to say, all of the bonus songs were songs sourced from employee submissions. Later in the development process, they made an editorial decision to cut two songs that they thought were poor fits. These songs were Graveyard Shift, and, well, she actually typed in shit, Graveyard Shit. Uh, she meant shift. And, <laughs> graveyard <laughs> Shit! <laughs> and Triple <laughs> To my understanding, Graveyard Shift, that, that one was correct, uh, was cut because it, it, it was a very homemade recording and that they found not to meet the quality that they were looking for. Triple was cut, on the other hand, because it was a more jazz fusion at the time than it was rock, uh, which I think was fair, and it was in a very different shape at the time than the Triple you all know. And then she gives you a link to the to the original audio recording uh, that was submitted for the game, which I believe is still different. This Advanced is still harmony. prior. This is still prior to the one that we got in the prototype build um, that that we got really? because it, the one in the prototype build still has that guitar solo. I don't. This one doesn't. This one basically goes up to where that guitar solo is, but then it skips to what what we would consider the outro, like the last verse or chorus or whatever. So the mm-hmm. guitar piece isn't in there in this recording that she linked, um, but it says. Here's a link to the original audio I submitted for the game. The lead isn't a guitar. It alterna- it alternates between organ and horns. The texture was a lot lighter, and most notably, the main guitar solo hadn't been added yet. When they decided to cut it, I was a bit heartbroken. So I decided to take it upon myself to revamp it and petition it for reconsideration. I wrote the second solo. I re-recorded, with, re-recorded it with guitar leads. I engineered a heavier metal texture. And during my break hours in the office, I took a stab at retracking the song, authoring the new fingering patterns while I was on lunch. So this is a, entirely just a passion project. Just That's trying to get really into cool. the game before the, before the release date. Huh. Um, after going through all this, a few weeks later, I asked for a meeting with the dev leads and showed them my work. They were kind of annoyed. They told me they wished I hadn't invested my spare time into this as they already made the decision to cut it and weren't open to reconsidering it. I was again mm-hmm. heartbroken, but I moved on. I decided to let it go. So it wasn't until the game was released and shipped that I, or anyone, noticed that they hadn't emptied the trash, so to speak. That is, the chart and audio for the songs they decided to remove were still on the disc. They'd been removed from the song list, metadata included, but the data was still there. When I noticed that, I took a crack at engineering a, a codebreaker slash game, chart, g- game shark cheat code uh, that, when enabled, would inject triple metadata into the song list of the currently running game, and succeeded in doing so. The annoying part, I asked Harmonix for permission to release it before I did so. I didn't want to burn any bridges, and they gave it to me, but regardless, it became almost impossible to get rehired in the future there. I still had friends amongst management, but whenever my name would come up for future projects, the conversation was something like, wasn't that the kid who hacked their song into the game? Yeah, let's let's consider someone else. Mm. I, managed, I managed to get on the team for some of Guitar Hero 2 slash Rocks the 80s, but it was always an uphill battle against the stigma that they decided I deserved. And they and she puts the little, the little, what, uh, huh? Yeah, the little like, emoji type guy that was super popular whatever. in 2009 or whatever. Um, oh, I don't know, lol. That's what it was. I don't know, lol. Uh, anyhow, it's been decades since then, uh, so it is what it is. I reauthored and released the song for RBN, made some money off that, it's all yep. good. Smiley face. But yes, to circle back, I'm not sure who wrote slash recorded Graveyard Shift, but it was almost certainly an employee of Harmonix or a close friend of one. Interesting That's the that post. not even she knows. It's so interesting. Shift. Yeah. yeah, that was a yeah, very cool story. post. I wanted to share it. She got, she got snubbed. She got snubbed. I mean, you know, Harmonix back then sounded pretty uptight, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Mm. Like they, they definitely to get hired there, you right? had to have a music degree, right? I mean, sure. these are all yeah, and she, these are all sure people went, that are passionate about I'm pretty music. Sure and she went to Berkeley, like I'm pretty sure she went to Berkeley, like the rest of them did. 
you know? Probably. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Especially yeah. considering how, how good she is, according to you and your friends. I mean, apparently she's actually a very talented uh, individual. But, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a very cool little post, I thought. It was especially cool because it's so recent on a really old post. Mm. Wow. That's a, that's a really freaking crazy story because, like, I knew that there was the game shark. I knew Triple from the game, like, but I didn't know how that was found or done. I had yeah. no clue on the backstory on that. That's why it was, it was it was it was Andy Bush herself that did it and asked Harmonix for permission to publish that, which and they, they said apparently yes. they said yeah sure whatever, but they didn't exactly like it. But that's mm. cool. That's I, that that's that's the re really the only part that I didn't really know about that whole thing. I knew I knew most of that, and I, not, not the personal you know, stuff like I was working on my free time during lunch breaks and stuff like that. But yeah, and you know what I I don't get why they got mad if she was still doing her work. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? it was on her free time, right? Like, yeah, you know, like if, just, if, if if that's actually the case, maybe she, maybe she was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's it sound, really was just a passion project, but still. I mean, it, you know, I, I guess I guess at the same time, maybe try to put yourself in the perspective of these devs and the fact that Guitar Hero was like a new concept to the West entirely, and a lot of money was being invested in making this game, and it was a make or break situation of whether this was going to succeed, you know, and so. We don't really know what the environment was like at that at that point, right? No, and surely it was a f fairly quick dev cycle. Mm -hmm. It must have been, yeah. I'd imagine. I mean, I, I don't I don't know when when that you know dates were for when they actually started developing well, on that. But based it, on the prototypes, like it was in a rough state, like two weeks before the final build was was uh, was released. So like they were doing a that, lot that of work build, quickly. I mean, that build Guitar was Hero, pretty rough. Like Guitar Hero as a whole was in such a different spot at that point. Versus what we think of as the series today, right? Yeah. It was the little, like, indie project at the start. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays you hear Guitar Hero and you think, oh, wow, big money moves, like crazy yeah. franchise. Activision milking it. But this was a brand new, it was an up-and-comer. Right, nobody this was expected, a new IP. Nobody knew it was going to be the biggest game in the world in two years. Right? No. no. I didn't even know about Guitar Hero until Guitar Hero 3. I had no idea it existed. Fake Zero. fan! Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, I yeah, didn't yeah, get into yeah, the yeah, series whatever. until GH two, right? A little bit after GH one. I came in a year late, so yeah. I mean, I also came in a year late, but I started with Katario one. Sure. Yeah, it's always crazy to that be before like people like like people like Alec, where like their first experience was GH one when it came out. You know, mm -hmm. like yep, yeah, he, he's got all of us beaten that in the terms of real he does. OGs. He does, OG, yeah, and his, and his brother, the his brother was the one the that all, of all of us. His brother was the one that made it happen. So thank you, aside yeah. bro. Yeah, but yeah, he changed very, the world. Very cool that Andy came out and uh, like set the record straight because it's always been like, and she told me like this story in person too, but it was like, you know, like it was in a bar and so it was really loud and like I listened and everything, but I was like, I know what she said, but I don't know what she said. So I'm glad yeah. that because this is now that, I'm, now that I'm reading this, now that I'm reading this, I can remember it. Yeah, this is what she said. She said like, oh yeah, like I put it in the game. They didn't mm. like it. I tried to make it better. They didn't like it. You know. Anyways, uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk about more um, songs that should have been in Guitar Hero but were not. There's an old Score Hero post that was brought to my attention during one of my streams this past week during the gauntlet um, for, for songs that were at one point considered for or were approved for uh, Guitar Hero but at some point were cut uh, before release. So this is a Score Hero thread from the 28th of December of 2010. So this is a few months after Warriors of Rock came out. Um mm -hmm. So I linked you here. This is a this is a post uh, by Nayumi uh, that w that is quoting a Frankie B uh, uh, submission. Frankie B was um, not a developer, but was friends with the developers. He was close with them. I think I think he was part of like the the crew that went to go to the NeverSoft offices um, with um, with Toy Machine and all those other people uh, when when World Tour was new. I want to say that. I don't know. I don't know the rest of the story though, so I won't say it. But. Uh, he did have insider information, and at one point he wrote, I really hope that, asterisk, 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 a whole bunch of asterisks, uh, uh, that, and all these things, break your elitist fingers. He was talking shit about people that think they're too good at the game. And then people started speculating what those songs might be with all those asterisks. Um, so this thread was people talking about what songs those might be, and later on in the post we do get a confirmation of what they are. He was writing, uh, where is it? Uh, Black Widow, Sudden Death, Fear of the Storm, Chemical Warfare, and Nemesis were the ones that were actually um, blanked up by those asterisks. But that's not the cool part. Mm. The cool part comes later in this thread. I forget what page it's on. It might be on page like four or five. Talking about, uh, there was a whole list of other songs. 
One of them being Deliverance by Opeth. That yeah, song, sure. 14 minutes long, by the way, that was supposed to be in World Tour. But, but it didn't, ha didn't happen off. in World Tour. That's, that's wow. exactly my thoughts, too. When, I, when this was brought up to me and during stream, I lost my fucking mind. That's one of my... Dun, that, dun, might, dun, dun, dun. Yes. that might be my favorite Opeth song of all time. It might be. It's either that or Opeth's Ghost. Opeth's one of my favorite bands. That's crazy. Opeth. Yeah, Opeth's great. But Unsurprisingly, you imagine that Elliot, fucking song? Elliot is in this thread. Unsurprisingly, yep, always, <laughs> always is, always is uh, everywhere. Elliot, yep. er, Elliot is everywhere, um, but yeah, Deliverance by Opeth was supposed. To, oh, here it is um, on page. What is it? Page five for you guys. Uh, it's by what? by user named Memesis or Memesis. I don't know. How to oh say yeah, okay. It. But they were they were part of NeverSoft according to their uh, their footer. NeverSoft designer for 2008-2010. They say um, it was actually hold on the post above that. Um, there was another song that would that, would, that had a, um, five letters for the band name and 11 letters for the song name. That was one of the asterisk things that we were talking about. And um, I have to reiterate what I said before and the gamer said above me. They came out saying during the world tour days that Deliverance by Opeth was supposed to be on there but had some but some problem had come up. Which, seeing as that song fits the letter blanks perfectly, that's an absurdly long metal song with leg-numbing double bass that I figured they were trying to get into World Tour or War Warriors of Rock again. So that it missed the mark on World Tour, but maybe they thought War Warriors of Rock... It would fit perfectly in Warriors of Rock. Oh, yeah. Like, last yeah. year, after all the unlocks, that'd be amazing. But, so this, this Memesis guy says, it, it was, he, he's confirming, it was Deliverance by Opeth. Because of disc space issues, it came down to cutting three or four songs or cutting Opeth. Long story short, Opeth pulled the, pulled the short straw. As for all the other songs short that were cut, straw. requested, mulled over. <laughs> uh, as for all the other songs that were cut, requested, mulled over, etc., I don't know if it's a good idea to say. I would fear that any, everyone that would think that set list for Warriors of Rock, which is a pretty damn epic, is shitty in comparison to what it could have been. Regardless. Uh, so yeah, it came down to either cutting a couple songs or putting on Opeth. And personally, I think you probably could have cut like three or four songs from the, the set list and put Opeth on there and made it better, personally. I mean, hey, the guitar sure. would have been redundant. The guitar in that song is pretty... Dur, nur, nur, dur, dur. Like, yeah. that's very, like... But the drums. It, but the drums would have been such a challenge. But the oh, drums. Wow. And the outro yeah. that goes on for four minutes where the guitar's... It's the same riff for four minutes, yeah. I mean, it's great to zone out to, but man, it would suck to play. Oh, yeah, totally. Probably, yeah. But... Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. There was there was a whole bunch of other songs that were in here too that were I gotta find that where that where that is. I think it's later on. I mean, Warriors of Rock was a uh, you know self described labor of love game, so. Mm hmm. And and they definitely had a very clear um, idea of what they what type of music they wanted in the game too. Oh like, yeah, they wanted metal, they wanted to go out with a metal. bang. Yeah, they had a theme that were here. It is okay. It's on uh, page seven of this post, about halfway down. Same guy, Memesis, um, the the NeverSoft dev. He says. Or I, I, I was scrolling and I lost it again. Hello? Here it is. Uh, here's a small sampling of music for Warriors of Rock that we either requested and got no response slash refusal for, or that we requested, were approved, but were subsequ subsequently cut for various reasons, such as lost or damaged masters, poor live versions, or simply cut in favor of something else. Uh, Iced Cacophony? Earth. Travel in Stygian. That's one of them. Uh, focus, 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 focus. Hocus Pocus, yes. And, Yo, uh, the live Magic performance would have gone so hard. Holy crap. That, that's actually one I've heard of before. The Hocus Pocus one I've heard of before. Magic it's... Man by Heart. Speed yeah. Metal Symphony by Cacophony, which is an old school like Guitar Hero 2 uh, custom, I remember. Yes. yes. That's probably why, why they wanted to big, add it. Big Brown Beaver. Exactly. Just like uh, Primus uh, sucks. Black, Black Window. Yeah, Primus Dude, sucks. Can you imagine getting Wino's Big Brown Beaver in, in Guitar Hero? You, you really then, want Wino's Big Brown Beaver? Yes, I do. And, uh, <laughs> and then Damage Incorporated by Metallica. Uh, Run Pig Run by Queens of the Stone Age and The Prince by Diamond Head were some of them that this person was able to remember. So, interesting yeah. song picks there. Would the cool biggest to one the to me there is Hocus Pocus. Focus. That's the big, the big, the biggest been, one so to me hard. Is, is Speed Metal Symphony. Like it's kind of criminal that, that didn't make it. I'm not gonna lie. For those who don't know who Cacophony uh, is, it was a uh, a dual effort by uh, Jason Becker and Marty Friedman. Uh, Marty Friedman played on guitar for Rustin and Pete's by Megadeth and our albums. Uh, Jason Becker is a guitarist who had his ability taken from him too soon. Uh, he was diagnosed with ALS at a young age. He has not been able to play guitar for a very long time. Um, Damn, I didn't know that. But if you want to listen to stuff by him, look up Perpetual Burn. That album is amazing. Insane album. Uh, two, two very talented guitarists, right? Very talented. Like, And, you know, in, in all fairness, like this Cacophony album, the Speed Metal Symphony is from, like, it, it, it's dirty, you know? Like, it, it's sloppy, right? Like, it, it, but it, it would have fit the theme of Warriors of Rock really well. 
Yes. Really, really well. Yeah, that, that would have fit in nicely, like right next to Black Widow. That was a very popular Guitar Hero Two custom song. And um, oh yeah, I, I don't think I don't think Speed Metal Symphony dude, was a super popular one. The popular one that I know of, of, of from Cacophony was Concerto. That dude, song was all sure. over the place. Speed Metal Symphony is almost ten minutes long. Uh and you know, it is okay. nine and a half minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I was looking, at, I was getting really excited about Focus Hocus Pocus, but there's some confirmation in this thread too. It wouldn't have been the live version that I was hoping for. Okay. So there's a reason for anybody who doesn't know the song, the studio version is in Rocksmith. It was actually released. It was released there when I still worked on the game. Um, and it's a much different version than what you normally see passed around as the live version. Uh, the studio version is like six plus minutes. Uh, but they were put on a show in the seventies to play it and they were only given four and they said, fuck it. We're playing the whole song. So they just sped it up to like one fifty percent and played it live. <laughs> Holy crap. Right. So if you've never seen it, like it's worth getting that live clip and watching it because it look, it's just four dudes blitzed out of their mind playing crazy speed jazz on TV and people going out of their minds for it. Like, yes. Incredible. Is it, it, is is it, it this live one from 73? I assume. Yes. And it's with that it's again. the guy doing the the operatic crazy vocals and pulling the flute out of his ass and playing the flute mid song. Yeah, yeah, you need that in your life. That's, Jesus Christ! It's an absolute ode to cocaine in the best Dude, way possible. I, I've never seen this, this video. Comment. This is Dude. this is out of this world. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this no, it's insane. legitimately it's an all timer performance, and that's I I think one of the very first custom videos I ever put up on like phase oh, yeah. shift was this song damn like dude. it's a pop culture moment <laughs> this is insane. right and that's why i'm saying the live version would have been incredible to see but again from what they're saying here there's no stems so yeah. i'm assuming yeah. that's why like the, the studio version's comment, good dude when a vocalist starts twitching 40 times before the song even starts, you just know you're in for a bang oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah big time that dude's yeah. coked out of his mind Hey, it's it's a crazy song from like just the meme side of it, but it's legitimately a technical masterpiece too because they're oh, yeah. slaying it. Chops for days. Chops for and days. Mutton, mutton, mutton chops too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, these vocals are so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for those who are unfamiliar, this is the Yodel song you may have heard if you played any sports games growing up or watch yeah. a sporting event. It's pretty popular like NHL games. It, this is probably a reference that way too many people are, are too young for, but if anybody watched The Price is Right and there was that game with the, the, the hiker going up the mountain, that's what it reminds me of, the yodeling. Wow, I just dated myself. I am old as fuck. I'm turning to dust. I'm going to evaporate now. Bye, Jason. Bye, Jason. See you, Jason. Thanks, okay, thanks for good. watching, guys. Okay. <laughs> no, now that, now that he's gone, I can, I can, JP, you should leave too so I can monologue about my little thing that I wanted to talk about too. Uh, oh, thanks. He actually left. <laughs> <laughs> he turned his camera <laughs> off. You bitch. Now, now I'm gonna have to edit that. It's gonna be annoying. <laughs> Wait, where did J, J, where did he go? <laughs> Jason's actually gone. They think he actually sl slinked away. Bro, probably crawled away to grab water or something like. <laughs> Jason. Bro's gone. Okay. What, what, he actually what, did. Oh, he actually is. did. He's walking What's back that? into frame. That guy. What's that? Oh, hello. Hey, wait. What happened? No, what's what's the game where where it's just like what's the game where he's like Jason? Jason! 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 Heavy rain! <laughs> Heavy rain. <laughs> Press X to Jason! 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 <laughs> Jason! Anyways, and if oh, you guys man. have any other topics you want to get out of the way first, let me know because this is gonna be what I ended on because we're gonna lose viewers when I start talking about this shit. Okay. Well, I got I got one real quick, which is okay. fuck UMG. Just want to throw that out yeah. there. Yeah, yes. UMG. UMG. Eat my ass. Fuck UMG. You, you, you music guys can go fuck off. All right. Uh, I just, everything. I saw a news article that, uh, I did not get to throw around to all my buddies here earlier that UMG just secured a deal with Spotify to help artists promote their music more on Spotify because fuck TikTok apparently. So this is my middle finger back to the UMG suits who are continually making it harder for us to share the content that we want to make. Fuck y'all. All right. There we go. That's it. Yeah, TikTok's a weird place right now because, um, I mean, they, they are starting to crack down, right? And yeah, like, it's hard. Rules are rules, right? But it, it's kind of hard when you got away with it for a while and all of a sudden they're like, I changed my mind. You're like, no, wait, please give it back. Like, you know, like, I just want to share. 
I just want to share the music. I want to share footage of yeah. video games. Fuck, without man. Having to, now, without having to pitch shift it or speed it up to 105% and do all that shit. Well, now TikTok's striking people, right? Like, I know people who have been yeah. striked, and it's um, it's starting to feel like the... <clears throat> The, the the older days of YouTube now. Yeah, yeah. So, like, History. yeah. Time all, is a flat circle. All good it's, things it's happening must again. come to an end. Yeah, you know, it, is what it, it, it is. really is that type of feel. Imagine the stigma of somebody taking a clone hero video and speeding it up by like ten or fifteen percent, and then posting it on YouTube, and people be like, "Why the fuck are you speeding it up? You're just yeah. trying to make it look better." And then the realize that that actually is the meta right now on TikTok because it's the yeah. only way to share it. Yeah, it is. It is. otherwise it'll get muted. Yeah, do you want yeah. to hear the song? Know, yeah, it's you only faster. can share it this way. Yeah. Fuck! You know, Chad Chad said today um, in a different server, Chad Chad was like... Chad just like, drums? Yeah, on a, Chad, yeah. Chad the drummer? Yeah, yeah Chad, Chad just drums. Yeah, he, he, was like, he was like, oh man, you know, like I have all these strikes now, like I think I'm just going to stream, you know, I'm just not going to upload anymore, and I was like, damn. Like, I get it. That sucks. You it know, sucks. That sucks a lot. Because... Yep. Like, stream, okay, like, I mean, Jason's been streaming for a long time, Jake just started streaming, unfortunately got denied for partner, but that usually happens the first time. I mean, I'm, I'm not normal. surprised, I'm not surprised, I yeah. have, like, but I like, have, like, only a few streams under my belt, and I try to apply yeah, for partners, gotta, they're like, dude, come on, prove yourself first, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll do that, you, you gotta I'll continue get more doing what and you you will do, you will get it, like, I believe that, but, yeah, in time, like, I've in always, time, it's, it's not I've a priority, I've always been on really? and off of streaming, and, you don't like, get much you know, from being streaming? Twitch partner anyways, right, like, it's not that big of yeah. a deal, it's just kind of a cool thing. It not is anymore. Cool just it used to be worth a lot more. Name. Yeah. It did used to be worth significantly more, but... Yeah, not anymore. Like, streaming and video making are, like, two very different things. And oh, yeah. um, I'm different. always... You know, like, I'm, like... I, I, I jump between being introverted and extroverted. Like, on here, like, I'm more than happy to talk to my friends and everything. But it's, like... You know, I, I find myself in a position a lot where I, I will start streaming and then like an hour and I'll be like, this is a mistake. Like, I want to I wanna go home. Like, I already am home. You know what I mean? But, like, figuratively. <laughs> and... Like the the kind of feeling you get, like when you go out with friends and you're out for like an hour, you're just like, man, I wish I didn't come out. You know, like that's, that's, yeah. that's how, oh, I, that's how I, know I get feeling. with streaming. I know the feeling. That's how I get. That's how I get with streaming. And so, like for Chad, for Chad, just drums to like say that, like I'm just gonna stream instead. I'm just like, I don't know how the fuck these people do it because like I can't get into that mindset. Like I would rather not stream. You know, like and I've tried so many times and like I think part I think part of it is that like um. You know, maybe, maybe like, this is a good topic. Like, the, the competitiveness of streaming in today's environment. Like, um, you know, there's so many people streaming the same thing that you're doing, right? Yeah. Like, even, like, Fortnite or, or Clone Hero or whatever, right? Like, there, or, like, there's a lot of people streaming what you're doing. And, you know, so, like, when, like, Jason or, or Alec or, or now Jake are streaming and, like, then I try streaming and it's, like, the whole time I can't get out of my head that just like, ah, oh, like, why am I doing this? Like, people would rather watch them. Like, that's always where my head goes, right? And I'm sure a lot mm -hmm. of people suffer from that as being, like, you know, smaller. But there's some people out there who can just do that and it doesn't bother them and they have their own small little community. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm i like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could do that, you know? Like, it's, it's, it's a struggle because... I've always, like, I will benefit greatly from having at least, like, an active chat where, like, people are just talking. Like, it doesn't have to be a lot of people. But, like, chat is a big deal with it is. streaming. Like, having, I mean, having like, even just, like, two people talking in your chat actively is, like, a big help, you know? I think that it's worth pointing out the way people use streams as a whole is much different now than it was when I first started streaming. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, okay. Way different. Spanner so that. I'm showing my age here again, but the very first time I started streaming wasn't on Twitch, right? It was on Justin and Justin. that was the podcast, right? That was the, not this one. That was my old show, the losers bracket. Shout out to VVV gaming, the old team that I played for who allowed me to get two and a half years of, of podcasting experience and be able to interview the CEO of MLG and, uh, the cool. people who ran the IGN pro league, right. Shout out to the oh, people, man. you know, um, th that that's wild to think back to that. Like Adam Apicella, that was the vice president of MLG at the time where Sundance to Giovanni and these incredible I, names. Dude, of, I know all these people. That's so cool. awesome. People Crazy, in the esports world, right? That's, that's amazing that I was able to do Speaking that. Speaking of esports, I'm wearing an esports shirt right now. It's ESL esports league. Oh <laughs> shit. ESL. <laughs> oh yo. I'm just, I'm just wearing Kirby. Um, <laughs> this, this fruit is 3d. <laughs> but hey, the reason I bring that up, the reason I bring it up is that streaming as a whole is much different now than it was back then, right? We've gone through a whole yeah. damn pandemic. The world's mm -hmm. changed. 
Um, and people do kind of, I feel like lurk a lot more with their comfort they content, do. right? Yeah. I don't feel like a lot of people I'm a lurker. are engaged. Yo, I, I am too. I lurk. I don't, I, it's rare that yeah. I chat in chats. I just sit and watch. Yeah. It's just and a, so just me, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the streamer is a lot more to, um, they are more of the content now, right? Like a lot of people like myself, I used to react more with chat and I can't do that as much anymore mm -hmm. because people aren't as engaged with chat as they used to be. Unless you are one of those top 0 0.001 streamers where you have thousands and thousands of extra people. Yeah, but where that's... it's literally impossible to read every every message because they're always, you know, every time chat chat scrolls, you have an entirely new set of people talking because oh because God. your name is right. Jinxie. Yeah, but, but that's not <laughs> like the majority of people. Right. No, that's that not is, that is only a couple of people that have that sort of thing. Going yeah. On, yeah. You have a handful of streamers <clears throat> that do that and everybody else is is trying to survive with their content. Right. Because that's what the landscape is right now. And so make sure to give yourself credit, because if you're turning on the camera and you've got anybody there whatsoever, you're doing better than a lot of people. That's a W. Right? It yeah, is. like and I, I would totally agree with that. Like I, I, I like I like that perspective because thinking back to like the times that you're talking about with Justin TV, like I mean, the only Guitar Hero streamer that had a following on Justin TV was George, Yukai yeah. Monkey, right? He was like, adjusted. I didn't know he, George he started when, on when you stream. With Justin. You he started on you stream, mm -hmm. and then when Justin TV became a, few, a thing, he was streamers. streaming. He was streaming on Justin TV, and then Justin TV became Twitch. And, and and George was the first partnered Guitar Hero streamer, right? A few weeks before me, yeah. Yep. And then you became partnered, and then Alec became partnered. Yep. And then and that's when, and that's when partner meant something too. That and is, it was hard dude, as fuck to I get, mean, right? What, what were the requirements just, back then? Well, uh, first of all, back then you didn't <laughs> get a list of requirements. No, you had to well, email yeah, them. There was at the time that I got partnered. You were supposed to have, I thought, I want to say it was close to 150 concurrent, but right before that, it was supposed to be 500 unless you were in a niche. And the reason that I got in at the time was because I was in a niche, right? Like when UCOG and I got partnered, people weren't partnered for Guitar Hero. That just nope. didn't happen. This is pre Clone Hero, right? Like, it, well, it I mean, happen. at the time, Guitar Hero was pretty much dead, right? This is like, yeah, well, yeah. being revived, it was, it was right before it was. Rock Band 4 and Guitar Hero Live, to be but fair. George and Jason but, brought in people, man. They they just did. We mm -hmm. did. They did. Yeah, we Y'all were, were him. It, it doesn't and, make any sense then, dramatically. But and then yeah. Alex started bringing people. <laughs> Al Alec and Randy started streaming again at the same time, and then they started bringing people in. Which okay, real, real quick. And then I, I got to shout this out, too. This is sounding almost exactly like what Asai was saying on the Around the Bar podcast with, with Optic Hitch. <laughs> Which I haven't gotten to listen to yet, so I feel Dude, behind. Dude, you it's gotta listen good. to it. It's so good. It's very good. Yeah, if you guys it, weren't it, aware, um, Optic Hitch, the person who put on the off season that we talk about frequently, um, uh, has a podcast called Around the Bar. Uh, he, he talks with uh, various people, uh, and one of these people uh, last week, well, mm. timing wise, I have no idea how many weeks yeah. ago it was for you guys when this comes out. But uh, Alec <laughs> was on the show. He, he invited Alec out. He, he flew down to Texas for a day or two, uh, and he, he did the podcast and. Um, after he after he was done filming it, he he talked to us in our Discord. He was like, "Dude, it just felt like I was talking on Lore Hero. This is just a Lore Hero episode to me, and it, it really kind of was. It, it felt very much mm -hmm. like Lore Hero, but for a more casual audience. Because we, oh, yeah. with our audience, we just kind of take for granted that you guys mostly know what we're talking about <laughs> because like, we don't have to explain as much, right? But but for this, he had to go, go full ex explanations to it because this audience does not know Guitar Hero. They only right. know Guitar Hero as that one game that you know they might have played back in high school or their mom or dad played." You know, so he had to explain everything in full, but he did a very good job doing it. And uh, I suggest everybody, uh, every one of our viewers, goes and watches it. I'll put it. I'll put a link yes, to that please. description. It's a great. It's a great podcast, even outside of Alec. Like they've had Noisy Butters on. She's had quite a bit yeah. of crossover with oh, the Guitar Hero butters. community. Yeah, Butters. Yeah, Butters on there. I think that was like a week or two before Alec. Yes, as recent oh, was. Hope she's there. Well. There's a there's one moment on on the pod that I, I want to call out that I I think was fucking awesome that Alec had mentioned to to us previously is that um, Hitch says like. Like yeah, man. You know when we were when we were getting off season ready, like Corey Dunn, who Corey has a history, right? He was helping. He he was a big proponent in putting on the event, but he has a history in like video gaming tournaments and stuff, right? And like broadcasting. So Corey was like, hey man, you know like we we don't have enough copies of Guitar Hero three. We don't have any guitars. Like can we just do Clone Hero? And Hitch was like, hmm, nah, no, <laughs> no way, real Guitar he, Hero he, only. Bro, bro was like, 
I'll buy everything myself, right? Like I'll buy the copies, I'll buy the guitars. And then he ended up getting them through me, right? Like he got, he got some stock guitars. However, like an hour in the tournament, the stock guitars, people were complaining about them. So they just got rid of them. <laughs> they were like, oh, it's overstrumming. Oh, it's activating star power without yeah. me trying to. The frets You're are getting dropping. Like, guitars, obviously. This is what happens when you give, when you give people two, three, sixty less pause. This is what they do. That's how they behave. It's mm-hmm. unfortunate. It's very common, it's especially they're nowadays. Old. They're, they're old. They're old. And, and, and to be fair, they did that when they were new, too. <laughs> yep. Very common but problems. That that model specifically. But but yeah, like and, and just hearing the outsider perspective of then Hitch also, like Alec explaining Guitar Hero Live to him. And how like, oh, they tried to give us a revival. didn't really work out. And then he shows him a picture. He's like, oh, dude. I saw, I saw so many of those. Things. I, I saw these guitar guitar for guitar season. hero controllers, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. To a completely like, to completely like, uh, not in the, in touch with the community person, like a yeah, casual person, like, the person that the, the game is, is kind that? of marketed like, towards a little bit. Is, they're like, "What the is fuck that, is, is that? that? A I don't knock play off? That. What is that?" Right? Yeah. Like, so <laughs> that, that shows you how much of a miss that game was to the, the general audience. But yeah. So it, it was just that was, really that was cool to see. It was really cool to see the reaction of somebody who's not embedded in this world at all, and is being told these things and being like blown away at every corner, being like, "What?" <laughs> like, yeah, I, it was I think that, really I think cool that's watch. great. I, it was like it was refreshing to see somebody who is no idea, like zero idea, right? And I'm so for excited that to, to listen to this. Wow, I, yeah. I think yeah. you're really throw it gonna, on the background. I think you're really going to enjoy I was, it. I was watching in the background and stuff. I had it on my TV when I was like cooking dinner. Yeah, I had it on my, my iPad while I was working over there. Yeah, it was great. You know, it was great. Yeah, it, but yeah, it, like go go watch that. You know, I don't want to spoil everything, but there's a lot of great moments, and like Alec just gets to do his thing. The more the you know, the more intoxicated he gets, the more excited he gets, which was my favorite part. Where he's like, yeah, they, more they drink on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, and that's why it's called around the bar. And he's like, mm-hmm. he's like, bro, like I, 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 I he's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Hitch did a really good job of like, like doing the interview or whatever because he just let Alc go. Like, yeah, Alc I was just that. it was his podcast much. Alc ran the show for the most part. He talked I, about. Whatever I love that. About. I'm so and like and Hitch is a great dude. Like, I'm so glad that he invited Alec on because like he he's he's giving our little community a chance, and I'm Fuck so yeah. grateful mm-hmm. for that. Like that that's the important part of this is that like nobody's really given us a chance, right? Like the CSC has put on their their tournaments. There's one going on right now, actually. This and and like the, you know the first invitational had like almost like a thousand viewers right like it was it, it was did really deal. yeah it did really good yeah it did really really well but off season it being in person on console was just a completely different feeling and like that was because of Hitch like he's the one that just had the idea of like hey why don't we do Guitar Hero you know and yeah, and now it's like, starting no, to nobody... look like it's going to be a staple it's seeming to I, look that I, way I, I hope so I'm pretty sure <laughs> they mentioned in that podcast that they're looking into it again. You just yeah. nailed uh, something else uh, that I've been feeling for a while, um, with the with the guitar hero thing, uh, with you just saying, "Hey, you know, they're, they're giving us a chance." That's kind of why I think I'm so into Fortnite Festival, right? Like, they're giving us a saying, chance. Yeah, we've been we've been chance. saying we've You're been totally saying right. for years, right? Like Clone Hero came along and it gave us a chance to keep the community alive. Um, these other rhythm games that we've been seeing. They're giving us the chance to keep getting new people invested. That's what Fortnite Festival is bringing to the table that nothing else has been able to in the last decade, which is it's giving us the chance to introduce the entire scene, what we love, to new people. And I think that's why I get so frustrated when people shit on it without either giving constructive criticism or or actually trying, right? Like so many people have like turned their head away from it without like, oh, but it's not Guitar Hero. It's not Rock Band. Why didn't they just make a new Rock Band? Yeah. Right, yeah. It doesn't have strumming. Even Biggest though complaint. that's coming. Yet. Even though it's that's coming. coming. But nobody right? seems to know you, about that you, yet. Still. And you best believe yeah. we're going to be popping off. So when it's it comes gonna, out. It's going to be a game changer. I've said it from day one because that's the oh, way yeah, people go, be. oh, wait, wait. What, should I actually pay attention oh, wait. to this? Rock Band 5? Yeah. Right? Yeah, for real. Yeah. Like, Rock pretty Band much. 5. In every way but name. Spiritually. It's a spiritual. Yeah, spiritual successor. people don't like. It, Fortnite Festival is a spiritual successor to the Rock Band franchise. That is yeah. what it is, and if you don't like it, too fucking bad. <laughs> too, too bad. <laughs> like, it, it, it is what it is. Too bad. Yeah. This is what we get. Checkmate. You know, like liberal. If you don't want to finish your dinner, you, checkmate you know, atheist. Like <laughs> checkmate liberal. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I think I'll wrap up my my little passion dump here by saying, if you're here listening to this right now, if you have been supporting us 
if you've given Fortnite a chance, uh, if you help keep this scene alive right now, thank you. Because literally, we're doing this for you guys because we love it. We don't make yes, money do. off this show. We nope. do it because not we yet. have passion for it. Maybe yeah. in the future, maybe if we're lucky, that'd be cool. But that's not why right now, right? We're doing it because we love it. We want to see the scene grow. And we want to mm -hmm. share the passion we've accumulated over the last couple of years. And <laughs> zeros on the end, whatever the fuck. Um, <laughs> so that we can hopefully make the scene keep getting better in the future too. So if you're here right now, if you're enjoying, if you're giving the chance to the community itself too, thank you. Done. Yeah, thank you. And and thank you to everybody who's been giving us um, feedback in the comments yes. too. Because uh, yeah. we take all your we... feedback uh, with, with great... Uh, care right uh, and a lot of people have just said hey thanks uh this show i love the show i'm not a podcast person i listen to podcasts but i listen to your guys's podcast because this and is that, something that i love it's near and dear to my so heart cool. it, it's yeah. helped me through a tough time like it, it brings you back to the good old days you know it makes me happy and that makes me feel happy too because we're yeah, able to being help, told, help you like, do that. it gets me through a tough time is probably like the most surreal thing that i can i can be told because like yeah it, you it, know, it fucks me up because too, like, it's I, like I, I, i'm just well, a guy i'm just talking Right. And, but yeah. I have Amen. like, you know, I, I'm I'm sure that we all have experience where like something else helped us through a tough time, right? Yes. Whether yes. It, yes. music or, or a game or, or a podcast or just like somebody who makes videos, like like yeah. you know, like like and, and so being told that, having experienced that yourself, it's like Yeah, it's cool know, to be that guy now. It's being uh, be on the other it's end like, of it. Yeah, it, it, it is so 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 thank you all and like you know, like I it con the comments are great, like, you know, I, I, I made an oopsie and I said that only the PS2 fat had USB ports. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just like, oh, the PS2 Slim doesn't have USB ports. There's no way. I was wrong. I don't know why I misremembered that, so I apologize. Um, JP, but... it actually doesn't have the port they use the iToy with, okay? The PS2 Slims didn't have the iToy port, and some PS2 fat models didn't have the iToy port either. <laughs> there, was an I there was an iToy port? <laughs> yeah, there, there's, a, there's a specific port for that little fucking PS2 webcam. I think it was called an iToy, right? PS2 it, well, no, iToy? It was called the iToy, but I didn't know that. There's Here, a specific thought, port for that on the PS2. <laughs> I thought that was the Apple vibrator, but never mind. The fuck are you talking okay. about? Hello? I to I toy? Huh? No. Oh, never. Mm. Oh, oh, I get you now. Thank you. Okay. Bruh. Took me, it took me Bruh. A while. <laughs> wow. All right, listen. Comments are great. You know, if you guys ever have any suggestions on anything that you'd like to see us talk about, anybody uh, that you'd like to see us bring on the show, we're supposed to have a guest very soon after you see this, so uh, get hyped for that. And, uh, we're going to try to have more guests on soon. There's been a lot of requests for people to come on. Um, and we want to try to maintain, I guess, a balance between guest and no guest, right? And so yeah. there's a lot of people in the community and former dev and stuff like that that we could bring on. Like, there's definitely... Well, we'll, we'll say this. We're, we're in talks with one former dev of Guitar Hero right now to yes. get them on the, on the podcast. We're in talks. That's we're confirmed. just trying to figure out a good date. That's confirmed. We'll tell you that yeah. right now. And, and yeah. you I think people already know about that. If if that does happen, uh, it's a nice way to celebrate the podcast reaching a half a year, which is which is coming up next it's been week. Half a year already? Huh? What the hell? What the hell are you talking about? It's been that's that long just, already. I'm that's sorry. Totally did I just numbers? Did I just did I just spring that on you? I'm that, sorry. That's how that's how numbers work, don't that's they? Insane. Twenty six is indeed wow. half of fifty two, which is how many weeks are. Fuck! I didn't think of that. Holy shit! Wow. Did we did we just start this last week? <laughs> I think so. Well, I, have I have one correction it. to make. I have, I have a quick correction. Yeah. That link, that that little port that I was talking about, not for the iToy. That is for the iLink, oh. which is how you link two PS2s so together. I, I I got the i cor yeah. I, I correct, but the iToy is just regular USB. I, I this is how you like system link PS2. I together. That that's how it works. But uh, and here I was just making yeah, bad guys. jokes, so I didn't know what the <laughs> fuck you were talking about. <laughs> you, tr you tried. <laughs> it, I, it I tried. worked after after the, after I thought about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have one more topic I want to talk about. If you if you are yeah, interested this, in Counter Strike and at all, just leave. Just get off the podcast. Buy Lower Here episode twenty five out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there is currently a uh, well. At the time you're watching this, is already going to be over, and you're going to know who won. But uh, as we're recording this today, Friday, um, there is a, a tournament going on for Counter Strike right now. The very first tournament for Counter Strike Two, uh, oh. which is just CS:GO, but. Um, a huge update. They called it Counter Strike Two, kind of like an Overwatch Two type beat. Same thing. Mm. Um, so first, first tournament for this Counter Strike Two game is happening right now. It's called the PGL uh, Copenhagen Major Twenty Twenty Four. PGL is the company that's putting this on. Um, we are we are now in the playoffs uh, of it. Today was the semi, uh, the, or sorry, the quarterfinals match. So there were um, uh, two sets of matches today. There were there were um, four matches. 
uh, between two days. Uh, so this, this was the second day of, of matches in the quarters. So there was, a, there was two teams going against each other, um, G2 uh, versus Maus. Um, G2 is sponsored by a, uh, a, a CSGO gambling website called uh, CSGO Roll. They, uh, they have a sponsorship with them. This is just part of Counter-Strike uh, lore. I mean, everybody knows about Counter-Strike skins and how expensive they are and the gambling that was with it. I could go on for hours about this, but to keep it brief, maybe, maybe like in 2015, 16, 17, somewhere in there, Valve kind of nuked a lot of these sites because it was against their terms of service. And ever since then, they've they've kind of just taken a hands-off approach. Like, it is technically not, not, not like legal uh, towards the terms of service, but they still operate without any sort of um, infractions. But the CSGO role... Uh, website um, the owner of this website has a different type of, of website I think it was called hype drop yeah it was called hype drop this is something else it, I think you can like, get real life items with this but it's still gambling in a sense it's like online gambling in a way and they are shutting down that site they announced that they're shutting down that site uh, like within a month and there's there's a banner on the website that says if you have any funds uh, withdraw them now we'll be shutting down effective this date right so uh, that, that website, Hypedrop, is connected to CSGO Roll by their owner. There is a competing website called CSGO Empire um, that is accusing the CSGO Roll um, uh, website of being a scam website, right? Um, and at, at this major, this is how it ties back, at, at this major tournament, during G2, who are sponsored by CSGO Roll, um, the owner of CSGO Empire, who goes by Monarch, that's his name online, he was... Um, he had uh, paid people in attendance to this major um, to protest. They, they paid people to rush the stage and protest oh. CSGO Roll's involvement and, and, and call for G2 to drop the sponsorship with this website. So there were... This, this guy's a fucking moron, by the way. This Monarch fellow, he, he, he streams on, on kick, right? Uh, I have a link for you guys. You can see what this oh, guy's boy. kick stream looks like. Somebody, somebody recorded... Um, like 17 minutes leading up to this event because he announced that this shit, that this shit was going to happen, kind of. Uh, so if you skip around in this video, this is, just, this is just him watching the major and waiting for it to happen because he knows these people are going to go on stage. He's been teasing it all day. And look at his background. If you skip through this video, can you, do you notice something odd going on in the background of his webcam? Maybe there's like, I don't know, seven or eight Asian women just lazily dancing in the background. I don't What's know, up with that? Them. What yeah, the fuck what? is this guy doing? He paid those people to just be there wearing CSGO Empire merch and just lazily dancing in the background. Later on, he refers to him as, as his slaves. But beyond that... Uh, what? So, we're moving past it. He called... You gotta get the slaves moving more. He was joking, but that, that's... that's Yikes. Um... It's a cool guy. Cool guy is all I need to know about this fella. So he paid these people to go rush the stage. They did that. They did exactly that. They rushed the stage. They made a big ass thing. They they delayed the game. It was it was at halftime um of the of the second game versus G two versus Maus. G two was already up uh one oh in this best of three, so and they were winning this, and they ended up. They did end up winning this after the match continued, but they they had to take like a probably a thirty to forty five minute break to one do a security check to make sure there's no more people are going to be rushing the stage they had to uh, kick these people out and th th they everybody that was on the stage had to go backstage and like hunker down to make sure there's no other security threats which is a, a real concern because these people that rushed the stage there was one guy that was like full sprint he who the fuck knows maybe he had a bomb strapped to his chest who the fuck knows yeah, seriously. But somehow he could have got through security that's like actually legitimately dangerous in an in arena full of people i have no idea how many people are in attendance but there's tens of thousands um Anyways, uh, event the event security was tipped off that this was going to happen, uh, like I don't know, fifteen minutes prior. So they they already had like increased security, but they, they they still got up on stage somehow, and they actually broke the trophy. The trophy for whoever wow. wins, forever whoever wins this major is like sitting front front center on the stage, so that you know everybody can look at it and see, oh, that's what they're working for. The, they didn't do it on purpose, but when they were tackled, like in that whole scuffle, they hit the stand that the trophy was on, it fell over and it broke. Um, so that was really shitty, and. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, it, it was just a whole weird ass event. It was really big, and I watched it unfold like an hour or two before we started recording this, so it's like fresh in my mind. And check this guy out. There's there's a guy who goes by Sticky Hands, who has been who has been a, a big hater of this uh, whole CS:GO roll thing because he claims that CS:GO roll um, scammed his house, is what he's saying. He is calling for them to give his house back. I have no idea what the fuck this guy's on. I, I think he's probably definitely mentally uh, challenged in one way or another. He might have schizophrenia. I don't fucking know. But he definitely has some sort of problems, and he believes that CSGO Roll owes him a house because, from my understanding, is he gambled on their website, lost, 
sold his house to pay off his debts or to get more money to gamble with, and now feels like he was scammed and is required in his owed compensation for yeah, being the, the scammed. Comments, the comments on this tweet are very apparent of that. Yes, because this guy is very, very, very obviously um, mentally ill in one way or another. He's been yeah. doing this for years, by the way. I did a deep dive on his Twitter. He's been calling for this for years. That's his whole. Pro that, that's his bio. See, his girl scammed my fucking house. Anyways, it was incredibly weird and uh, frankly disturbing, disgusting behavior uh, that um, surely will cause Valve to do an another big, major crackdown on uh, gambling sites and ruined everything for everybody. So, thank you to these guys. Oh man, guys. he he re he retweeted the video of the trophy falling down. If you go on his page, man, Oof. yeah, that sucks, dude. Yeah, there, there were so many. Uh, there's so many people in, in attendance, so that there's so many different angles of, the, of this happening. People just pulled up their phones and were recording it, so you can see yeah. everything happened from a shit ton of different angles. But yeah, it was it was just a bad time. But uh, you know, this sucks to see. It does. It does. But at the same time, it gives me hope that maybe, just maybe, if we ever see a competitive scene for festival in the future, that we can do it right. Because like, all right, surely this shit won't happen. No gambling you guys festival. weren't there. Please. I wish Alec was here so that I could share this with him. Uh, but just to give you guys like a slight like glimpse into what it looks like back in the esports days for Guitar Hero, right? Here's mm -hmm. a snippet. There were 10 of us that got to go to the Jacob Javits Center in New York City for the World Tour Finals, right? So this is before GH5 came out. And this was at the New York Comic Con, the finals for the Nationals that year. And I, I swear to God, every single match, we had the entire crowd hyped up around us. Anybody could just walk up and enjoy. Every competitor knew each other, and we all enjoyed hanging out with each other. Mm -hmm. And part of the fun for the event was just getting able to compete with each other in person mm -hmm. because we knew each other from online, but we never got to really hang out. So all getting to come from all around the country, hang out, play, and just whoever won was, it, whatever, we were happy for them, right? Like... What a yeah, difference. that's a whole completely different vibe. I mean, th yeah. that, that that could yeah. also just be said from large to small community, it, competitive community like Counter Strike, yeah. arguably the largest esport in the world right now. It, it might be arguable against like League of Legends or Dota or whatever, but um, sure. I mean, Guitar Hero wasn't filling arenas of twenty thousand people like 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 Counter Strike. Never. So it, it's just a, it's just a different type of vibe. But th I mean, that sounds like that sounds sick. Like if I I would be one of those competitors nowadays, I would love that. That'd be so fucking I wanna, cool. I'd love to see the opportunity for that. It'd be and, awesome. And, when I see shit like this, I'm just like, man, I hope we get the opportunity to do it right one day. I don't yeah, know. I mean, That's where my brain goes. I love goes. esports. I love esports. I, I want to see the. I want to see the. I want to see the great. scene grow, and uh, I would love that if if Guitar Hero or Festival or any sort of uh, thing like this in the future is part of it because it's my favorite game and I love the it. Hard, and I want to well, see the best for it. The hardest part yeah. is music licensing for broadcast. I think. Yes. Because yeah. like, hey, yeah. this is. I mentioned MLG earlier in the show, but there was a time in GH5 era where GH5 was featured at, G at that MLG events, um, but it was not major competition. It was a side booth, and they gave basically just small prizes to the top score of the day. And so I just used it to farm gift cards because no <laughs> one else knew. Right? That's awesome. Like, Hell yeah, dude. That's so awesome. It's I swear to God, for anybody who wasn't there, I bet I could find pictures of this. I'll have to try to find one later. But it was sponsored by Hot Pockets. Dude, that's a big get back then. A banger that's of a sponsor, yeah. That's a banger sponsor for sure. Yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah that's then, sweet. Man. Hot Pockets was all the rage. Like, obviously, yeah. they're still popular, but, like, when they were new, like, they were yeah. huge. It was Hot Pockets you know? booth with a GH5 setup, and it was like, who can get the highest score on Scatterbrain, win $50 to Best Buy? And you're like, oh, easy fucking easy. money, pal. <laughs> easy, 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 easy money. <laughs> That's it. So Dude. maybe, maybe we'll bring get those tournaments shot back. One day. Bring those back for me back. alone, because I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, I want to clean out whoever's put on that tournament. <laughs> That's my whole shtick. Yeah. Getting high they scores. That's what I do. First. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they just have to step one. Well, they have hey, to exist, know, and step two, they have if, to be near uh, close to me. So. If off season three does happen, then you know we got to uh, we got to get lore hero shirts. Oh yeah, Ooh, we, yeah. dude, we got to get a merch yeah, booth set up there. We could sell yeah, lore yeah. hero shirts. We could sell all sorts of different <laughs> merch. Would you buy a lore hero shirt, guys? Be honest. Yeah, let us know tell, in the comments if you me. buy a lore hero shirt. Do you want to? Do you want to give us free money on Patreon? Tell us. Let, let, be honest. What, what would you pay yeah, for on be Patreon? Honest be honest. Oh no. 
Would you, need, would you pay, need, would you pay he, 50 bucks to hang out with us? Be honest. Like, serious, serious question, though, unironically, <laughs> is that people have suggested Be we honest. make a Patreon. Um, we don't we don't know what to offer people, though. So if you have any ideas on what uh, bonus content that we could potentially offer that people might enjoy, just let us know. Yeah, if you have any ideas, yeah. Otherwise, we could uh, just think about ripping off any other successful podcast. Yeah, because Patreon we're, we're we're clueless, honestly. Like we're completely yeah. clueless in this regard. We're just, we're just never done. I've never had pants. Patreon before. I don't know how no. this works. You know? I, I tried know. starting a Patreon. It didn't go very well. Dude, people so. people told me to start a Patreon for like the guitar modding stuff, and I was like, I have nothing to offer to, you. People to do though. what? Like, Are you I, just gonna give me money? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. use my me PayPal money, link. Like, I mean. It's appreciated, but I'm the type of person where, like, I don't like just being given money unless I have something to give in return. That's just how I am. I know? understand. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Shit, dude. Okay, so. real quick. I want to I want to talk about that because um, during my Guitar Hero Gauntlet, which was an overwhelming success, by the way. Crazy success. Yes. Thanks for everybody who watched. Congrats on that. Congrats. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a, a few real-life friends of mine uh, were aware that I was streaming now, and one of my real-life friends ended up giving me, like, 60, 65 gifted subs. And like, Whoa. dude, so you, did not, you, you did not have to do that. Like, that was incredibly, uh, thank you, thank you. I was great, great, grateful for that, but you did not have to do that. And he's like, no, I just want to support the stream. It was fun. But in return, he, I play Counter-Strike with him. I sent him a whole bunch of cases to, to open on Counter-Strike. Nice. Well, expensive old, 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 old OG cases I've had sitting around in a, in a storage unit for, for investment purposes. But uh, I, had to, I had to pay it back. I felt bad. I felt really yeah. bad. I, I had to yeah, give him yeah. something back. Cause like he didn't get anything out of that. He was just gifting subs, like to gift me money in a sense, and gift p subs to the community. But like I know the guy IRL. I grew up with him. I've known him my whole life. And I'm like, dude, I, now, now you put me in a weird spot. You put me in a weird spot. You gave me something. <laughs> I got to give you something back in return, right? Check check your check your mailbox. I'll I'll ship you something. I don't know. What do you want? Want to go get lunch? I don't care. <laughs> he lives across the country, that, so I can't really do that. But regardless, that 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 that's cool though. Yeah, like I um, I. Yeah, like, I, I just, I don't like just taking without being able to give something, you know? So we want to be able to give you guys stuff, you know? Like, if it, like, if it means, like, making, like, a, like a short, like, after show or, like, what whatever, right? Like, yeah, shit, I mean, that's the meta. That's the meta for yeah. podcasts right now is to have, like, a premium show for your Patreon subscribers, you know, five bucks, ten bucks a month or whatever, you get access to the premium show. We could do that I mean, if you want. I mean, the, how, how much does the yard make per month, man? Only, like, like a quarter mil. Maybe even more yeah, than that. I don't know. Like, the Yard is like the what? biggest podcast on the planet. It is. It's crazy. And they are the biggest podcast on Patreon that actually shows how much money they make. Every other yes. podcast. There are bigger podcasts in the Yard, but they don't show you how much money they make. And I, I, I appreciate the honesty and the uh, the upfrontness. Well, that's a good thing that Ludwig and his 218K. crew are very good 218, at. 218K that, a month. Oh, man. Ludwig and his crew are very good at transparency. It's something that I can really appreciate. Like, like they Ludwig are. has never been Ludwig generally never been inspirational. To talk about finances, you know, like yeah. he's like, who the hell cares, man? Like, I don't care if you know how much money I make, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like so. You know, good, good on, good on him and and all. You know, Nick, like Slime, Aiden, all the guys on the yard. Like, yeah, I, I really like that's that might be one of my favorite podcasts right at this moment. I watch every episode. I yeah. I, I, I'm a fake fan though. I've never I've never purchased their Patreon, so I've never seen their 150 yeah, whatever, or whatever bonus yeah, shows. Whatever. But, hey, someday look, look. I'll I'll buy that I'll buy that one one month for five bucks, and I'll just sit down and watch every single bonus episode in like. I mean, Lud, like if you weeks. see this, you know, Lud, if you see this, don't be too hard on him. He's trying his best. <laughs> hey, hey, Lud, if you see this, um, I'll fly out to LA. I'll I'll come on the yard. Uh, no, not that way. Hey, there we go. Um. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, this is this is Lore here, episode twenty five. Next week, thank you, Jason, is going to be our six months anniversary. That's fucking wild. I can't believe it. Crazy. Uh, hope to see you all there next week. Uh, thank you. See you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Alk will be back next week. Yeah. Woo.